taught you them to, how to create a stronger and better relationships. And I am very happy to introduce Kevin Dabla. Thank you. Allow me to introduce Kevin A. Dunlap. Kevin? Good morning, everybody. Thank you, fellow entrepreneurs. Uh, I just want to get, get a kind of a feel for the room. How many people in, in this room today have been in business for less than one year? Okay. Two people. And so how many people in here have been in business for one to five years? By a show of hands. And then how many people have been in business for longer than five years? You're a seasoned entrepreneur. Oh, fantastic. Does anybody know what the little flip camcorder is? It's the little square device about the size of a cell phone is now, and a little USB connection that came out. In October 2009, for my real estate business, I started recording all of the houses that, uh, that, I, that, I, that I was marketing. I stood in front of the camera, introduced the house, toured the house, and then at the end, I uh, stood in front of the camera a second time. <laughs> Do you think that helped me out over the course of a few years? Absolutely. Imagine this. This is before I became a realtor. I, w I was doing a lot of lease option homes. <coughs> uh, what, what's your name? Linnea. Linnea. Say, Linnea calls me at noon. I've never heard her voice before. I don't know who she is. She calls me at noon. She wants to look at a house at 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, she says, I like this I like this house. Let's sign a contract. 3.30, we're signing contracts. We're still at the house. She wants to put money down uh, as an option payment to secure her right to buy the house. She gives me $7,000 in cash. <laughs> this happens about every couple of months. No, just she gives me $7,000 in cash. And what is she walking away with uh, when she walks out of that house? Mm -hmm. A receipt mm -hmm. and a list of telephone numbers. Mm -hmm. That's it. No key, no contract. Because we're at the house. I don't have a, I don't have a copy machine. I'm taking it on with me. So she, she's, uh, she's like, I'll promise you I'll send you a contract in a couple of hours. i got to go find Dave, the owner, so that he can actually sign the contract. Then I'll meet with you tomorrow to give you a double-sided contract as well as the keys. All of that was based completely on trust, know, and like. And how did, I, how, did, how did she know and like and trust me? Through video. So you see your face over and over and over again? They tend to trust you. A lot of people will call me, especially uh, uh, new investors, and they'll say, I want a foreclosure. And then my question is to them is, what is your definition of a foreclosure? Because your definition, there's two types, there's, there's two categories of foreclosure. One is going to be the category where a home is technically not, is in foreclosure, meaning that it's going to be a short sale. It means that the owner still owns the house, they're, they're just have not made payments. Another, for, uh, another type of foreclosure is when after the bank has foreclosed on the home, and now that it's bank owned. Repo here means that bank owned. This house here is a bank owned home. This house here is a short sale. Whenever I do this sort for you, if you're using me as your realtor and I'm doing this sort for you, I have two ways that I, that, that I sort this grid. The grid, number one, will be sorted by actual close date, number one. Most recent one is on top, because that's the most relevant. And, and this is going back six months, okay? The second sort that I do, uh, because the ones that are, have not closed yet are the ones that are under contract, like these two, or these two here that are not under contract. That's why they don't have that acceptance date. These ones do. Is uh, The second sort is going to be by the listing price per square foot. You'll notice it goes, in this case, 122, 123, 127, 127. So the house, let's say you're interested in this one at 123 uh, a square foot, comps are showing... It's not a bad price house. Has anybody heard of this kind of uh, goal setting? Okay, it's an acronym. Yes. Setting a smart goal. Mm -hmm. Have y'all, what, CJ, Lena, y'all heard of these before? Yes. So, so we'll go over this. I'm going to show you guys up uh, in the online world. Well, you probably also heard it. But we'll go over these five components. So the S, to be that smart, it has to be specific. And this is the funniest thing. I ask people, because I've done a lot of stuff on personal growth, and then I ask them for a specific goal. Like, let's say Harry. Say Harry says, I want to make more money. And I'll go to this, oh, here's a dime, and just make more money, you got your goal. But he goes, well, I meant this. I go, okay, well, when you're asking the universe, when you're asking to set a goal, this has to be specific. It has to be a tangible, numerical value. So always, the subconscious mind does not understand the word not. 
So with that being said is whenever you have a goal in mind, and it has to be a specific goal, it has to be always set in the positive. 